Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and today I'm down on the allotment and well, it is a gorgeous day. There's no wind, beautiful sun as you can see probably behind me. Lovely blue skies and uh, I wasn't going to do a tour but I uh, thought well, it's just can't beat a day like today. Got to do a tour. So let's have a look around. So let's start with the polytunnel. So first up we've got three tubs of peas and they're all growing along really quite nicely so I'm very pleased with those and you can see pretty good very happy with those and then we've got three tubs of carrots and they're starting to grow pretty well and those are planted in October I'm pretty pleased with those and we've got celery that's still growing very strongly and then we've got this rather poor salad bed so it was pretty good for most of the year but now these lettuces are getting pretty sickly so i'm going to transplant some from the uh, from the greenhouse into here i'll show you those later and i've got my little seedlings and these were all brassicas uh, they're coming along okay, they're mostly looking healthy. There's a few that aren't brilliant, maybe some of these here, not perfect, but pretty good. Got a few spare peas, and I got some leeks, and some boltardy beetroot, and a whole load of spring onions. And then I got my little brassica bed. And it looks quite full, but I think actually I could start to uh, remove some bits and pieces from there soon and get some new brassicas transplanted. So I think, for example, that Romanesco cauliflower, that'll be done uh, within a couple of weeks. So I'll get some calabrese in there, for example, and maybe some of these other areas where I've got this rocket and things like that, I can get some of the stuff squeezed in. And then... Down here, I've got calabrese, four calabrese there, and then all of these are Romanesco cauliflowers. And you can see this coloration on them. I don't think it affects the taste. I think they've just got a touch of frost. Um, but as I say, it doesn't matter. We've picked our first one, and that was still really nice. So then I've got my potatoes and the ones that are up and growing nicely they're charlottes they were planted a couple of weeks before these which are swift now my experience is that very early in the year charlottes do the best and you can see just how well they are growing um, but hopefully these swift will still be fine and i do pop a bit of fleece on them overnight so what else have we got? Uh, basically all these tubs up here are strawberries and all those containers along there, they're all strawberries as well. And then I've got my another salad bed, losing a few plants in there, but it doesn't matter because as soon as I lose them I transplant um, some calabrese in and you can probably see there look, I've got some nice calabrese come in. So, what else have we got? Yeah, just lots of salads, lots of brassicas. And this is the one that I've just harvested. And you can see I've got some little uh, side shoots of uh, Romanescos come in. So I don't know what they're going to be like. It's my first time growing Romanescos. I've got a little bit of char chard in here. And again, just lots of... Uh, Lots of different brassicas and salads. And I've got some carrots up here. And I've got another container of these carrots which are just germinating at home. And then they'll be down here as soon as they germinate. So my policy is basically germinate at home and then bring them here. Um, I don't know, it's, they don't look particularly healthy do they, but uh, we'll see how they go. So here's a quick overview of the plot. I 
Um, let's just step through it. So, and here we've got our lamb's lettuce. That's growing nicely. Under that fleece, we've got uh, true spinach. It's doing pretty well, but not as good as the stuff you'll see in a minute. And then we've got some salad beds here. These have been planted specifically for harvesting in March. Although I am just starting to harvest them a little bit just to keep the plants uh, nice and neat and tidy. And just, you know, make sure I'm getting rid of damaged leaves like those. So, yeah, pretty good. That's why all my salads, they never mature because I'm always picking them as fast as I possibly can. And then we've got lots of salad rocket and miner's lettuce. Miner's lettuce is uh, a big favourite of Debbie and ours in our salad mixes. And I'm almost finished with these outdoor uh, spring onions. In fact, I'm going to leave those to grow on a little bit because we've got some others, which I'll show you in a minute, which I really need to start picking. And I've got another nice salad bed here. And it's, uh, again, it's growing pretty well. Quite pleased with this one. And again, this was planted specifically for harvesting in March, but it still needs tidying up. So I'll close that. And I've got a lovely uh, bed of chard there. And at the front, actually, we've got beetroot, and this is bull's blood. So gorgeous, isn't it? And then I've got this bed here, which is spring onions, which are not particularly healthy, uh, but mostly it's radishes. So we've got a lot of radishes in here. Uh, each little clump is probably three plants, sometimes four. Occasionally two. Um, I've got all of this uh, radish. This is a winter radish and it really is growing strongly now. There's no radishes but what I am going to start doing is taking some of the leaves for smoothie mixes because uh, they're looking pretty good and uh, I'm not sure whether we'll actually get radishes because these were planted a bit too late but certainly we're getting a nice crop of leaves and we've got another salad bed over there and then we're now finally eating spinach and we've got a really nice uh, crop of spinach here this is red kitten and it's really gorgeous very uh, crunchy crisp leaves and as you can see you know we're harvesting that so um, yeah that's why these plants will never look big and mature No sign of life yet in the asparagus bed. And then this is my next succession of spinach. And this is also looking really nice. Very happy with this. It's growing on really quite quickly. So I think actually by next week, I'll probably be taking my first harvest off this bed, which is much earlier than I was expecting, but just the weather at the moment this week is going to be really great so I think uh, I'm going to see a lot of progress here and then I've got just a few little bits and pieces in here it's a bit more um, rocket a little bit of spinach and then these are just spare red cabbages and I don't really know what to do with them so I stuck them in here whether I'll actually get any red cabbages off them I don't know it's not really the best use for a cold frame but I had nothing to go in here but more importantly I've got my early peas down the back there and the same in this bed here uh, another batch of, of early peas some mizuna some cabbages some giant red mustard which again we put the small these are quite nice you don't really want to let them grow big um, so we just pick these every day or every other day 
uh, just keep them small and they're quite nice in salads and they're okay in smoothies as well and then we've got some more bull's blood beetroot and I mainly use these for leaves I, I'm not sure whether the uh, the actual beetroots themselves when they've overwintered are much good I did try some a few years ago and I wasn't that impressed they were a little bit woody but uh, I'll give them a go again it may be that just because I picked so many leaves the um, that's what made them woody okay so then I've got some more Romanesco cauliflowers here and I'm not actually expecting to get uh, cauliflowers off these um, but I might do but instead I'm picking the leaves and I'm a real fan of these Romanesco cauliflower leaves that are quite mild and they're very tender so uh, really good and I've got my another succession there of spring onions which are doing pretty well so they're probably about a month away from harvest and then I've got some perpetual spinach here and again this is interplanted with radish but ah just let's look at this just look at that perpetual spinach gorgeous and I've got a carrot bed here and I've done a bit of an experiment here so this carrot bed was planted at the same time as a container full of carrots the container full of carrots is in the conservatory under the desk out of the way um, and so it's nice and warm and of course this is uh, well it's in a cold frame but it's not exactly warm so I want to compare the time to germination and the time to harvest of those two approaches because I'm doing lots of experiments with carrots this year so down that edge there I've got some more spring onions and some sprouts which I'm we're, we're not using those to grow actual sprouts we're using them for the leaves and then down there's my main cabbage reserve and then on to some more salad beds this is the these um this polythene's got this coating on it which is uh, hydrophilic and it really makes a difference you can see how good the uh, light transmission is through it so this is roxy and it's not survived the hard frosts particularly well you can see probably there some tip burn on some of the leaves and I've lost as you can probably see quite a few of the uh, plants here but the ones that are remaining show some signs of coming back to life which is good because I really like Roxy but I don't like it as much as Grenoble Red which is just fabulous I mean it just doesn't get better than that does it look at those those small leaves that's the size I picked them at um, oh, they're so crunchy and uh, yeah they're gorgeous tasting and I've only lost I think that one plant there and I've picked these twice a week pretty much all the way through winter so just amazing Grenoble Red and there's my shallots and I'm very very pleased with these I've got um, down the outer edge there there's garlic and then there's shallots down the center and then strawberries down the edge and trees in the middle and just a few bits and pieces brassicas there and then in here there's chard that will coming out soon and uh, what have we got in here so again another bed of salads again destined for harvesting in March although yet again I am picking a few leaves off these just to keep them tidy and there's an example there of one that I lost so I do lose 
maybe one or two lettuces a week to uh, to this problem, stem rot. Um, and there's more Grenoble red. This bed is a little bit behind uh, the other one, but I'm still getting nice harvests off here. And I've again lost one plant up there in the corner. And then this bed is Navara. And I love Navara, but I have lost quite a few plants in here. And I don't really know why. But... Uh, Fortunately, I've got some spares, so I'm going to be transplanting some new ones uh, in place of these failing ones. And then I've got baby leeks all at the back there, so I can't remember how many I've got, but lots of, lots of little baby leeks there. And then this is the spring onion bed, which is looking a bit ragged, but this is the one that I'll be harvesting soon. Um, in fact, I'll be harvesting today, starting harvesting today, just to leave the ones outside to uh, grow on a bit because these are mature now and because they don't, they don't look in great condition. So I want to get these harvested as soon as possible. Now let's take a look at the little greenhouse. So these are little cauliflowers, I think, across the top. And they're looking pretty good. They were looking very sickly when I transplanted them into these bigger pots but they're uh, growing on very nicely now. And then these are broccolinis. And I absolutely love broccolini. So, uh, so I'm really excited for these. So they're effectively a bit like a calabrese, but they just throw up, there's no central head, they just throw up side shoots. Um, so they're just really prolific. And there's more broccolinis down here, so again, really keen to get these planted but right now the better in here even though they are kind of reaching the uh, the tops of the uh, pots uh, sorry the the tops of the shelves um, I'd rather they're in here because I want them to get a good root ball in these pots before I transplant them and then across the top here I can't remember what these are I think these are actually Romanesco cauliflowers so it'll be interesting to see how those do and then I've got sprouts so we love sprout leaves um, and so I've got these little clumps here of three sprout plants uh, again I'm really keen to get these transplanted uh, and growing strong because uh, they're going to be a really uh, lovely uh, harvest of baby sprout tops there I've got some more spring onions ready to go in. And I've got these, so these are some of my reserve lettuces that I planted in December. And I think in hindsight, I'd have been better off planting them in November. They'd have been just that slight bit stronger plants and ready to transplant now. But I am going to experiment transplanting some of these into these gaps that uh, I've just been showing you. Um, because I think these little plants, they're big enough now there's no slugs out at the moment, I don't think. And I've got some Salanova reds as well, so I'm going to get those planted. See how they go. And then I've got some Winter Density, and they're looking pretty good as well, so I think I could probably transplant some of those. And then this is a Winter Lettuce, and I can't actually pronounce the name because it's Italian. Um, and it's not really ideal now because obviously we're coming out of winter, but... I've got high hopes for it next year, and so um, I want to transplant. I want to plant it, grow some on, see what they like, see if I like them enough to uh, give them space for next winter. So I just cleared this bed a couple of weeks ago. This did have uh, carrots and beetroot in it. Uh, we now don't have any beetroot or carrots left on the allotment. All the carrots are in store at home, and all the beetroot too. Uh, so this is ready for planting, and I think this will probably be early brassicas, and I'll go under fleece. Just back in the polytunnel for a minute, because I forgot to talk about, I've got all this garlic around all the edges of all the beds, and planted as well into the beds. Uh, and this is all for green garlic, 
so uh, not it's not going to grow to maturity because these beds are all going to be planted with peppers and whatever um yeah but uh, my intention is to uh, use that for green garlic and i'm finally back on my bike again and i've got my big carry bas basket on the front and should be loading that up with a harvest which i might show you later uh, but I'm, it won't be a big harvest, obviously, because I haven't got very much space. OK, so I'll just uh, take a quick walk down to Debbie's plot. There's not much going on there, but I'll show you around. There's not many uh, flowers at this time of year, but uh, Debbie's made some just to brighten things up. This is our most precious uh, crop on Debbie's uh, plot at the moment. It's the purple sprouting broccoli. Again, there's some signs of life there. It's been uh, munched a bit by pigeons, which is why I've got all this mesh on now. But uh, yeah, it's always exciting to see signs of the uh, PSB starting to form. So we just transplanted some uh, uh, perpetual kales in here. So we've now got one, two, three perpetual kales on there. They're, that's all one variety, my favourite. And then we've got another one here. I'll have a quick uh, walk around to Jenny's plot. So here we are. Everything's going pretty well here, got to say. Colette's looking fantastic. Look at this poor little kale though. <laughs> it's just, all the, all the kale plants are like this. Absolutely pathetic. Um, I don't know how many we've got, maybe six plants or something. We get about one leaf a week, something like that. Not so good. In fact, I notice, generally speaking, I think very few people have got kale on our allotment site. Just the white fly, dreadful. But uh, these field beans are still really, really delivering. I just can't pick them fast enough. And I want to keep picking them because, I, you know, they're they're really tender when the the shoots are young and I can just keep picking them off the uh, the tips and they just keep throwing up new shoots from the base and so they're just becoming a really thick mat fantastic and uh, we actually did give some away to uh, somebody on the allotment site and they didn't like them so much, but everybody else that's tried them seems to really like them. Leeks are doing okay. Still picking about, I don't know, one or two a week, something like that. Trying to keep them going, keep them lasting. And these are actual Aquadulce uh, broad beans. And they're doing okay as well. But uh, I'll have to get them supported soon. All the collets are doing really well on here. There's still stacks of plants on here, stacks of food. This bed, planted later on in the season, has not done so well. Again, it's kale, cabbages, things like that. It just everything's gone wrong with it, basically. Pigeons have eaten the cabbages and white fly decimated the health of the plants early on. You know, that's why they're just so weak and feeble but not everything can go right all the time so again more PSB it's about to burst into life and in theory these are all netted but some of the nets seem to have come off a bit but yeah I'm excited excited for this PSB because to be honest you know right now we are not short of greens but uh, we've got very little surplus and it is nice to share. Jenny's just cleaned up all of these strawberry plants, so they're all looking good. Garlic down the centres, uh, strawberries down the edges. That's what all the beds are like. Same here, elephant garlic, which is growing very strongly with uh, strawberries down the edges. Strawberries here around the onion, what will be the onion bed. And then this is the main garlic 
and overwintered onions. So these four are little garlic and these are all onions down here. And then just behind this little windbreak here, we've got some more um, broad beans. And I don't really know whether there's a difference, but I think there is probably a slight improvement from the broad beans that are protected by the windbreak by comparison with the ones that aren't, but it's not huge. In a few days time, I'll be clearing that bench and in there I shall be putting another batch of potatoes that I'll be bringing from home where they're currently protected from frost. And this shed gives pretty good protection from frost and then a bit of fleece on top as well. Um, yeah, we never really have a problem. And it gets pretty good sun, as you can see. So I'm back in the polytunnel now. Uh, I'm just going to get on with transplanting some of those little lettuces and clearing out some of those dead plants, just generally clearing the bed up. And then I'll get on with the harvest. Okay, so I've cleared out all the dead and dying lettuces in this bed. And I did have some radishes down the centre there, but I've got so many radishes. I thought, no, I'll stick some lettuces in. And these are the lettuces that I'm going to plant. So a mixture of the salanovas, which are those. And the Navara, which are those. Okay, so I pop some salanovas in there. Pop some Navara in there. And I've done the same in here. I don't know whether you can even see them. Lots of uh, little Navaras. So every uh, every station there that uh, where I lost one has now got a new one. Okay, that's me all done. Everything's planted. Everything's harvested. The bike so as much as I can carry. So uh, yeah, I'm going home. See you soon.